Okay. So hello everyone. I'm Carlson from Thinking Machines. I'm the head of the ML engineering team there. So thanks for inviting us over uh, so that we can talk about how we use Dagster for running ML pipelines in production. So just a brief intro uh, with Thinking Machines. We are, we are a global technology consultancy building AI and ML uh, solutions and data warehousing platforms to solve like high impact problems for our clients. So our clients range from large uh, corporations inside in Southeast Asia and like global nonprofit organizations. Uh, and our main goal is to empower these business users with uh, valuable data and insights to, so that they can make better decision making. Uh, we uh, we are internationally recognized in the field of data science. Uh, we presented in top machine learning conferences, uh, most recently ICML and Europe's 2020, wherein we've been uh, awarded uh, the best paper for in Europe's uh, for one of the ML uh, workshops for development uh, for our research in uh, geospatial geospatial uh, for poverty uh, estimation using uh, satellite imagery. And we've used Dagster for a number of uh, projects, uh, primarily for big data warehousing, wherein we use uh, Dagster for more traditional uh, ETL and ELT use cases, unifying data for multiple uh, sources and stakeholders, building up a data warehouse and uh, dashboards for analytics. We've also used it for big data ML, for orchestrating large scale batch predictions in the cloud for terabytes of daily data. And lastly, for ML ops, for automating key processes in the ML workflow, like training and evaluation. So we'll be focusing more on the third use case, which is for ML ops. So mentioning one of our projects where we use Dagster, so for building a smart unified search app. So this app in particular uh, consolidates a number of uh, data sources and allows users to basically search through these sources and get uh, relevant information. So one example of this is a user would then ask our application, like, how do I apply for vacation leave? And then our application using ML algorithms would then give the most relevant uh, section in the employee handbook, highlighting the steps that you would need to actually file for a leave. And our use cases extend from that, uh, also allowing our users to query relevant uh, entities like people and companies. So a user could then search for uh, the company GameStop, and then they'll get relevant information regarding that company. And so our uh, search app uh, composes of like three main uh, search features. Uh, one is semantic search, wherein based on your search query, it will give you the most relevant um, FAQ document. Second is for Q&A search, which is our initial example, wherein you will get the most relevant section of the employee handbook for your question. And third is entity search, giving you the most relevant person or company information. And all of this like search results are piped into a search ranker. So the search ranker is like an additional ML model that prioritizes from the, your search results, which one to actually uh, list down as the top priority and most relevant search result. So this is based on like the search query itself and the user and also like the confidence scores we have for each of the three different uh, search results. So just a simple uh, uh, architecture for our project. Uh, you can see here our training and test sets are piped into uh, the automated training and evaluation pipelines that we built using Daxter. And based on this, we can do continuous training for newer data and then build like new models that we then stage inside the S3 bucket. And from there, we can redeploy our web application servers, uh, storing these new models. And as our users are using our application, uh, their interactions will then give us more relevant information and give us user feedback so that we can build our models uh, and create more fine-tuned models for their uh, application needs. And we have like an additional set here wherein we created a few uh, DAGSER pipeline for meta pipeline monitoring. So this is our ML automation workflow. In general, it goes from POC to dev and to prod. And focusing on the first stage first, uh, the proof, on proof of concept phase is primarily done inside Jupyter Notebooks, uh, wherein our data scientists can fully uh, test out their different ML uh, approaches and run experiments, wherein the after that, they can finally finalize their ML methodology. And then that's when we start migrating over their Jupyter Notebooks inside Dagster pipelines, where we can do further fine tuning and polishing. So how does this work in practice? In the left side, you can see here uh, the Jupyter Notebook that our a typical uh, data scientist would create. So in this case, after they've done like some initial data prep, they would then start doing hyperparameter optimizations. Uh, they're using a module here uh, called Optuna, which is used for uh, 
hyperparameter search. And given like a number set, a set number of trials, like 100 trials, they would then get like the best scoring uh, model with its hyperparameters and accuracy score. And that's what we can then uh, save over and export as our best model from that number of trials. So this is like a typical thing that you would get from a data scientist's notebook. And then once we've like finalized this and polish it, we can actually start moving it over to our Dagster pipelines. And the uh, convenient thing here is you can pretty much just copy paste over your uh, notebook code inside uh, Dagster Solid since uh, Dagster is very Pythonic. Uh, it doesn't really require you to like write anything extra since most of uh, Dagster Solids are just Python functions. Uh, you can pretty much just uh, port it over to your Dagster Solid. And the additional steps here that you just do uh, in coordination with your data scientist is to add um, uh, the data descriptions for your solid definition and the input and output definitions. And this is important because uh, we'll need these uh, definitions uh, later on when we're uh, validating and debugging our pipeline inside the UI. And some additional steps is just adding logs and Dagster assets for ML metadata tracking. So more on this later. Um, just some learnings that we've had when running ML pipelines alongside existing Dagster pipelines. So usually when we're adding and porting over our Jupyter notebooks into like more uh, standard ML pipelines, we would already have like an existing Dagster infrastructure set in place for more traditional ETL and ELT uh, pipelines. So we don't really need to create like a new uh, a new set of uh, platform for our ML workflows. We can just uh, make use of our existing uh, Dagster uh, infrastructure and then add in our ML pipelines there. So one thing to take note is we should just organize our pipelines into logical groups. So for example, you would have a group for your different ETL uh, pipelines for source A and source B, and then you would have other groups for your ML pipelines for, let's say, a specific model X and then another model Y. So we make use of like the Dagster feature for repositories, which helps us like isolate the, the individual uh, groups. And this also further helps us isolate the dependencies for each of these uh, pipelines so you can avoid conflict. So if, say, for Model X, it requires a specific uh, version of PyTorch or scikit-learn, we can pretty much just ensure that that uh, version it does not conflict with Model Y's version of PyTorch and scikit-learn. And just some additional learnings that we've had, like Daxer makes it very easy to move over to prod since pipeline implementation it's pretty much the same whenever you're running inside, let's say, your local machine or your Kubernetes production environment. So there's very minimal changes when moving over your pipelines. So most of the changes is done inside the high-level Daxer configurations. But then on the pipeline level, you don't really need to change much to port it over. So uh, speaking of production, uh, moving on to that, this is where we can uh, fully make use of our automated training and evaluation model pipelines, uh, producing new models and deploying them into our servers where we can do further monitoring and get new data. So for pipeline monitoring for MLOps, we make use of Daxer's uh, asset materialization feature so we can keep track of ML metadata. So coming back to our uh, initial example, we have a code snippet here wherein we create like an asset called generated model. We give it a description and a set number of entries. And these entries are basically just key value pairs that we store to keep track of interesting ML metrics, like accuracy scores for your model, the best hyperparameters for it, and the output file name of the, your model. So this is important because later on, when you're actually checking your Dagster UI, you can view the metadata for each of your training runs. So here, your latest run can pretty much show you your file name, the hyperparameters that was the best scoring model and your accuracy score there. So your data scientists can pretty much uh, keep track of like the scores of each of your training runs. And we get to easily uh, view if like a certain run uh, is performing well, certain model uh, performed really well, and then notice that uh, the score went uh, down. So we can easily like debug uh, issues within the ML workflow. And Based on like the UI, we also like uh, appreciate like a lot of like the pipeline definitions. Since Dagster pipelines are very data aware, we can see like the input and output uh, coming through each of the solids. So we can keep track of how our data is uh, processed and changes throughout the pipeline, as opposed to uh, 
Airflow UI wherein the data is abstracted away from you. Uh, we don't really get to see how the data is uh, processed in our pipelines, and overall, it makes it a more intimidating uh, UI to work with. So what our data scientists can pretty much do in uh, the Daxer UI, they check the inputs and outputs of each pipeline step, validating the data schema of the pipelines. They filter through the pipeline logs from the UI, uh, being able to uh, filter through different log levels and debug their pipeline code. They monitor the pipeline outputs in the Daxer assets page, uh, validating these models and ensuring that the models meet a certain threshold before they deploy. They trigger pipelines with different configurations, uh, running the training pipeline either in a dev mode wherein they just run on a subset of the data, or they can run uh, the training pipeline with a production uh, mode wherein it runs on the full set of data. They rerun the pipelines or just subsets of the pipelines for further debugging. Uh, for pipeline, for additional pipeline monitoring, we also make use of the Slack uh, notifications. Um, in general, like our company uh, makes use of Slack for our day-to-day -day, like, communication. So it allow this allows us to spend less time manually checking the UI for pipeline passing or failure messages. And we get to find out when something happens as soon as it happens. So uh, just an example here is we get to see that a Daxer early ingestion pipeline is actually performing and succeeded although it didn't really get anything new data. So this still counts as a success for us. Um, and it, we can see here that the elapsed time takes this much and we can see if there's anything, any issues with the CPU resource, if ever this uh, amount of time passes is incredibly high. And we can uh, see the S3 or uh, S3 link to the ML model path that we created and used for the pipeline. And similarly, we can, uh, check like pipeline errors whenever it happens we can see the specific pipeline that failed and which solid actually failed there and even the error message that shows up in the solid and further on we created like a handy link here that allows us to just uh enter and then go and which sends us over to the dagster run itself where can we do where we can do like further debugging so just a extra step on top of like pipeline monitoring, we do like ex meta pipeline monitoring, wherein we've created like a Daxer pipeline that checks other pipelines. So how we do this is we build a separate Daxer pipeline to regularly do a health check on our production pipelines and summarize their status in Slack. Uh, as you can see here, we have like a summary that we get on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, giving us all of the different production pipelines that we have and its success scores in the past uh, few runs that it was uh, executed on. So we can easily see here that some of the pipelines are working as expected, and then some are not doing as well, and some things might need to be flagged for further debugging. And we even have like the last success date, which helps us like further check if there's any issues uh, based on that date. And how we do this is we have like a pipeline that accesses the Daxer database, uh, primarily the run stable. So we produce like a simple SQL query that just checks the number of pipeline runs for each pipeline. Uh, so based on like, let's say the past 10 runs of a pipeline, if it ran and succeeded only three times out of the 10, it would have then a success rate of 30%, which would then create that, that weather icon, which uh, gives us like a visual tool to quickly verify our pipeline statuses. So yeah, in conclusion, uh, why we think Daxer works for ML pipelines in production, um, data scientists uh, overall gets a very uh, user-friendly UI, which enables them to run data pipelines without fear. They can easily monitor their pipelines and debug their pipelines uh, from the UI. And secondly, uh, Dagster is very versatile, wherein we would have we would usually have a, a Dagster infrastructure that already uh, supports ETL and ELT pipelines, and then we could easily just extend that to support ML pipelines. So this uh, removes the overhead of setting up something completely new for our ML workflows. And thirdly, uh, Daxer is uniquely uh, works for ML ops because unlike other orchestrators, uh, Daxer has features that supports uh, ML ops uh, on top of like automating our training and evaluation. It also has Daxer assets that helps us keep track of ML metadata. And also in general, like Daxer's pipelines are Pythonic and data aware, which makes it very easy for us to port over from Jupyter Notebooks to Daxer pipelines. So um, just some extra things that we were planning on working on next uh, in the future, uh, we plan on migrating over to using gRPC servers inside Kubernetes so that we could separate out the pipeline code from core Daxer infrastructure. 
So this helps us update our pipeline separately from the Daxer daemons, like the scheduler and the sensors, so that we can avoid de redeploying them altogether. So this is just a step into more process isolation, but inside Kubernetes. Uh, second, we were planning on trying out more comprehensive data and schema validations using Daxer's integration with great expectations for better monitoring our data quality. And third, this is more of a recent uh, Daxer feature from 0 0.11. Uh, we want to try out dynamic orchestration for ETL, allowing us to generate solids uh, more dynamically during runtime instead of having to manually define it. And this has a bonus of like making it very easy to check inside the UI since uh, it allows you to view those dynamic solids a lot easier than manually defined solids. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you uh, for listening and I am free to for any questions later on. Thanks. That was fantastic, Carlson. Um, <clears throat> anyone in the audience, feel free to, uh, we can take brief questions now if you want to put anything in the chat. Um, or you can just, if you're uh, feeling brave, you can just uh, unmute and pop in. This is a pretty unregulated Zoom call. <laughs> I actually have a quick question. This is Rebecca here. Uh, thanks for the presentation. It's really cool to see how you guys use it. Uh, I just had a question about your Slack uh, pipelines, the, I mean, the notifications about the pipelines that run. Uh, the summary one looks really great. The, the ones that report on individual pipelines, I may have misunderstood that, but if that's what it's doing, does it, does it get spammy? Is it something that's uh, helpful for you to monitor uh, systems and that kind of stuff, or how do you use that? Uh, yeah, for like the staff notifications in general, like um, overall, like the most important ones are the ones that actually fail. So in terms of like success notifications, that might not be as important for us. So that's just like an additional check that we do. But then overall, the ones that actually do fail, that those are the ones that we actually tag users on. So we automate like also the tagging functionality we're in. Whenever we have a pipeline error, we would tag the relevant person for the, that pipeline. So that's what those are the most important ones. And on top of that, we just have those daily summaries that we do like a quick uh, sense check on. Yeah. Thanks.